sit back, strap in, and get ready for After Hours with TC Rastani. This is Abigail Harwich, executive producer, welcoming you to the show. And now, TC Rastani! Alrighty there, welcome to the Big Time Podcast. I'm T.C. Rustani, the host of After Hours with T.C. Rustani, the podcast emanating from the palatial podcast penthouse, and we are here with our esteemed panel of experts tonight. I'm going to round the horn and introduce them all to you, the greatest celebrity stalker of all time, the one and the only South Boston Jeff. Hey, 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 sailing along like the my favorite one-eyed sailor, just for sailing along. Hey, well, how's I'm, it going, T.C.? It's going great, SBJ. My mentor, Mr. Ricky Bidman. Up, up, and away, hey. How's up, everybody doing? We're up, up, and away, hey. Sorry I wasn't here last week. We didn't do a show last week. Oh. So your record's still intact. Wow. CJ did the rundown. Ah, that's right. That's right. I remember listening to the rundown. And, and CJ is joining us in, in studio tonight as opposed to being on virtual reality. What's going on, CJ? Yeah, yeah. What's up, brother? And roaming the facility is good, our good friend Quincy Briscoe. He had some sort of meeting. He just stormed out of here with his cheese yeah. balls and milk. I threw him for a loop. I said, uh, I'm off to spend the penny. And he goes, what do you mean? What can you buy for a penny? And I said, it's a euphemism for taking a piss. You never heard that. You ever hear that? No, but speaking of Penny, my nephew's dog, Penny, passed away last weekend. I did weekend. see that. I'm sorry. And uh, it was my weekend dog. I yeah. loved Penny. Penny was great. See how everything comes full circle? I mentioned spend the penny and it all ties in. And there we go. This isn't planned, ladies and gentlemen. This is what you call organic. Organic. Not like that processed stuff. No, no. no. It was organic. Other podcasts. R.I.P. Penny out there. We are recording this on the 12th. Of never. Of never. It means it's a Thursday, but you know what that means tomorrow is? You got it. Friday the 13th. <laughs> Made popular by in 1980 by the film Friday the 13th. Why, oh, was yeah. it, why was it called Friday the 13th? Because they already did Halloween. <laughs> why couldn't they just call it Jason Voorhees? Because he wasn't Camp in the Crystal movie Lake. until the end. Well, they could call right. it Camp Crystal Lake Horror Show. Well, would a horror movie really be good known as Pamela? Because that was the name of his mother. Pam sounds more scary well, than that's Pamela. That's the shit you put in a frying pan yeah, when you're cooking well, eggs. You know that that, that sounds like a porno. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Pamela. right. And oh, no, yeah. I do not want to see uh, Mrs. Voorhees in a porno. But seriously, like, why didn't they just call it Camp Crystal Lake? Camp Blood. That was the nickname. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you know what? Over the weekend, I will ask Sean S. Cunningham, the creator of Friday yeah, the Thirteenth. That's right. Know? That's a good one. Well, we can uh, yeah, they, we can get down to, to all this dirt. And everything. You know, they just recently ru ruined uh, Thanksgiving a few years ago. With <laughs> thanks killing. <laughs> yes, the puppet. Now I was down at a wedding in um, what's that town? Plymouth. Oh, of course. And this little kid had a pilgrim's hat off, and I noticed him across the street. He was on a porch, right? And he was staring at us as we were all walking down the beach. And I said to my buddy, I said, "Wouldn't it be funny?" If there was a horror movie about this kid who came to Plymouth to see Plymouth Rock and, and a spirit of like a murderous uh, pilgrim entered his soul and he became a homicidal maniac. Because this kid with the hat on, just he just created a real like scary picture. And then Thanksgiving came out. Well, Thanksgiving was about a killer turkey. Was it? Yeah. It was, no, you can no, no. no. Uh, Are you talking about Eli Roth's Thanksgiving? The, the, the horror movie about the... Uh, the, the it just the, came out a few years ago. Yeah, like uh, the, the, he's the, the killer that, uh, that st uh, sticks people in the oven and bakes them. Is that what happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I don't but, watch uh, these movies. Oh, okay. so but, uh, <laughs> I, I, this we are, movie, we're talking yeah, about movies. Uh, it was, movies. <laughs> let, let me... Uh, I was going to say. Uh, uh, don't sue me. Uh, don't, don't sue me, CJ. <laughs> let me give you the rundown on that movie. It wasn't... <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't That's as good as that uh, because, uh, like, uh, the the movie Thanksgiving was originally uh, started over those grindhouse trailers that uh, that that everybody made. Every uh, like uh, machete and uh, all those. Uh, it, it it was uh, so. This movie, uh, the the thanks Eli Roth's Thanksgiving has been in the works for at least ten years. Oh but when he finally God. got to finish it, he didn't. Uh, he uh, like uh, yeah, he kind of ruined it. Ten <laughs> years. But no, so the, we got that. Now that's the film that makes sense to me. That's crazy. Right, thanks. What's the one? But it, uh, it, it does kill a, a turkey. It does uh, uh, okay. like dabble in the history of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, that guy John Proctor, I think he is. Thanks killing. Oh yeah, I do see the turkey's head. Thanks killing right here. It's it's it's. <laughs> It says, warning boobs in the first second in oh, the movie. One Thanks, Mississippi. Thanks Killing starring Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
And uh, the bottom line here is the ultimate low budget experience, a real killer turkey comedy. <laughs> and the and the turkey's tagline in the movie is Wait, gobble gobble. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. So direct a video. Thanks. What, what year? This got to be seven. Oh no, no, no! This is this wow. is in the last twenty years. Really? Right? Yeah. Some of the one of the <laughs> couple of the interns down here were starting production, smarting me up to this maybe like six, seven years ago. They go, "Have you ever seen Thanks Killing?" I was like, oh. "No." And they went to YouTube and showed me the the trailer, and it looks like a Jim Henson puppet as a turkey. Yeah, yeah. And the thing at the end goes, "Gobble, gobble, motherfucker." Oh. Oh, now wait a minute. Jesus. So we got. We got Thanksgiving's been ruined. Christmas has been ruined <laughs> right. by horror movies. Halloween, of course. Right. The only one they haven't done is Easter, really, I don't think. Not yet. You know? <clears throat> the Easter Bunny. Give him, give him time. Yeah. Give him time. St. Patrick's Day. Well, did a Leprechaun movie? fall into that? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah with Willow. Yes. Yeah. Was, he was a Leprechaun. Yeah. <laughs> but the movie Leprechaun with Jennifer Aniston, wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that fall into that rubric? That, 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 well, ooh, big word. <laughs> rubric. <laughs> Uh, yes, the rubric of uh, St. Patrick's Day <laughs> is Leprechaun starring Warwick Davis and Jennifer Anderson. You are a great lawyer. Did you ever think you'd see that pairing up in a no, movie? No, 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 no. You think you That's should, before she had her face all chiseled, too. You, you think she was going to get him on a guest spot on Friends? No. He would have been good on that show, though. He He's very funny. I know he is. He's a very talented man. That scene in that movie, that show with uh, Ricky Gervais where he falls out of the limo was one of my favorite things to watch. Or that uh, life's too short. You yes, mean, that, yes. That, that, that sh oh yeah, that was great when he had like uh, like uh, he uh, had to go to reu reunion and they gave him a crappy Ewok suit and everything <laughs> yes. with dog hair all over it and it stank <laughs> and everything. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he he always got the shit end of the <clears throat> stick in that show. And speaking of stick, he'd go to the store and he'd take a mop. And use it to do his shopping, and the guy's like, "No, you're gonna have to buy the mob if you're gonna use it for shopping." <laughs> Poor bastard. He's like knocking stuff off the shelf. The only thing I didn't like uh, about that TV show was his secretary. His uh, that, that, oh yeah yeah, yeah she's uh, she's a uh, oh, what a goof. Yeah, I, I would just want to kick her in the face. So Sorry. getting back to Friday the Thirteenth, yes, we went on a little okay. tangent yes. there. Uh, it has nothing to do with the 1980 movie Friday the Thirteenth. You have a whole list well, here. I just jotted down some notes. Um, where do you where do you think the inception of the it's idea? It's a pagan th something happened. Actually, right? it's not a pagan thing. It's not what didn't happen like the uh, the Illuminati or something? No, nope. according to the internet now. Oh, of course, that must be true. It's hard to know exactly when Friday the 13th became thought of as unlucky, but it likely comes from the Christian religion. For example, excuse me, in the Bible, Judas, a person who was said to have had betrayed Judas, was the 13th guest at the Last Supper. Also, the Bible, in the Bible, many unfortunate things happened on Friday. Of course, we know one of them. Good Friday. Yeah, I don't know about anything else. Well, Judas, maybe they turned it to Jason. Well, okay, I'll give you that. Right. Yeah. Here's what a J. Red the Apostle. Remember Red? Red the Apostle. Yeah. I, I remember Red the Bum and Back to the Future. George Collin always talks about the uh, 13th Apostle, Red. Okay. I knew Dr. Red from Southie. You knew him. <laughs> I do, yeah. Now, was uh, Red the, uh, was he play, that guy played by Buck Flower? <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I don't know how. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> drunk driver. <laughs> Yeah, Matthew. I don't know how, how his name stuck in my head, but it's, I guess it's a cool name, Buck Flower. Now, do you know Buck Flower was on a was in was it was a, was a take two? Buck Flower was the bum in Back to the Future Red. We've established that. Yes, but ten years early, he was in the a movies called The Adventures of the Wilderness Family. Okay, I remember that movie. It was basically this girl had asthma, lived in Los Angeles, so yep. her father moved everybody to the Rocky Mountains, yep. and they met Buck Flower, who played Boomer the Mountain Man. Boomer, that's right. But you go back five years earlier. He was an actor in porno. Ah, but he wasn't. He wasn't having sex. He was just one of those actors that are in porno. Yeah. Somebody has to work. I've seen him. I've seen him. Yeah. He was like, what's his name in Boogie Nights? Don Cheadle. Gotcha. So, <laughs> Buck Flower. Good reference. And he was in They Live. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Everybody. Now. Yes. Yeah, everybody. Does it. There are no <laughs> countries no more. <laughs> Good movie. It was a good movie. But getting back to your Friday the 13th. We, well, we, that was it. I mean, that's... Oh, that's, that's kind of, well, no, there's other things, but a lot of bad things happen on Friday the 13th. Want to hear some of them? Yes. Uh, in 2010, on Friday the 13th, August... Friday, August 13th, 2010, a 13-year-old boy in Suffolk, England was struck by lightning. The lightning reportedly hit at 1.13 p.m. or 13.13 in military time. Mm. The boy survived unharmed. What was, was his name? It doesn't say. Oh. No. So who knows? Maybe this is all BS, but... 
Uh, Friday, uh, October 13, 2006, nearly half a million people lost power in Buffalo, New York, and the surrounding suburbs were buried under 22 to 24 inches of snow. Western New York is used to a lot of snow, but 24 inches in October? That's, I remember that. Yeah. What year was that? 20, 2006. Okay, I do remember that. I do, yeah, so do I. Weren't we coming home from Chiller early because we wanted to beat the, beat the blizzard home? Yeah, that, uh, that, that, that's a fair, all right, yeah, mm -hmm. that was it. See? See, there we go. We were part that of was, history. That's Friday the 13th. Now, my friend Dwayne, who I talked to today, wouldn't have even made that trip because it would have coincided with Friday the 13th. He doesn't leave his house. What if something happens in the house? I yeah, try to ask him that question. And like I said to you earlier, I wanted us to, uh, to call him on the air, but he wouldn't. But today is the 12th. Yeah, but he's, he, he would have had to have worked tomorrow. Right. See, because the schedule where he was is on and off, like you work so many days on and so many days off. So he was scheduled, he said, to go in. But he says, I'm not going to be going into work tomorrow because... Of Friday the 13th. And do, does work know this? Oh, yeah. That he, ta he, ought, he takes it off in advance. Like oh, okay. He takes his vacation days. He has to take a vacation day to do it. So for him, Friday the 13th is like that uh, in the hotel. There isn't a 13th floor. Exactly. So that day does not exist for him to work. Well, but no. I said to him, well, you know, if I had a day off home from work and I had nothing to do, what do you do? You make something good to eat? Well, you don't want to do that because you could get food poisoning. You don't want to sit there and drink all day because you could drink yourself to death. You could fall down and crack your head. Why, I'm, not, I'm interested. And he wouldn't tell me. I said, what do you do? Would you just sit in bed? Because even that could be unlucky, right? Imagine if his birthday was on the 13th. Oh, I don't think he, I think he would have killed himself. All right. It would be one of those leap year babies. No, no, it didn't happen. He's a great guy. And to talk to him regularly and then find out about this many years later surprises the shit out of you. Well, Let me just tell you. You know, people have superstitions. But that, I mean... I just don't understand it. All right. My guess is he just looks at this as an opportunity to really live it up on the 12th. All right, well, good for him. <laughs> so right now he's potty, and that's why he can't he be on the podcast. He can drink himself, probably drink himself blind, throw himself into bed, and wake up on the 14th. <laughs> I used to do that on Christmas. <laughs> that's right. I remember you saying that. Go to bed on the 24th, wake up on the 26th. Yeah, I've done that when I was sick, but I never intended. That was, that was in the, in the uh, depression. The dark years. days of T.C. Rustana. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We've all been there. It's true. But Christmas always falls on the 25th. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you don't have to worry about Friday. Every Friday is not the 13th. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's true, too. There's only one this year. It's, it's tomorrow. Oh, good. Good. So he'll well, be wait a minute. Well, this year's almost over. Right, so he'll be fine after the rest of the year. Now, speaking of the future, on Friday, April 13th, 2029, right. God willing, we'll all be here, asteroid 99942 Apophis is forecast to pass the Earth a scant 18,000 miles away, which is closer than any of the satellites we currently have in orbit. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, so we could all be extinct, mm -hmm. is what you're saying? That's what they're saying. Good. I hope it happens. And in closing, the world's economy apparently loses about $900 million because people are afraid to work and travel on this date, <laughs> says Donald Dassey, founder of the Stress Management Center and Phobia Institute of America. Oh, where is that located? I have no idea. No. Well, I mean, ask your friend. He must know. And not to mention uh, the, the, the famous crash uh, of the Andes that brought down the rugby team that started to eat each other That's and right. everything in the, in the movie Alive. That they also took off on a Friday the 13th. They One of my favorite books, actually. Mm. They were chewing ass in that movie. Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> eating ass? <laughs> that, was a, that was a good movie. You know who directed that movie? It was Frank Marshall. Who's he? He was uh, Steven Spielberg's producing buddy for all those mm. major movies in the 80s. Nice. So... Mm. Hats off to Frank Marshall. I remember seeing it. Didn't make much of an impact on me. Not saying it wasn't good. I just don't remember much of it. Because they always talking. Like, where, they, where were they from? They were like Portugal or something, mm -hmm. or Spain. Uh, they, yeah, yeah, one Portuguese, of those junk countries, yeah, yeah, right? You know, long before <laughs> cell phones or anything. Uh, Chile, actually, they were the Chile. Yeah. Chile from Friday the Thirteenth Part um, Three. It's pronounced Chile. <laughs> no, 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 no. Her name was Chile. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just talking about. Chile's dead. <laughs> <laughs> See that one? I think people applauded when Jason killed her. He was, even her death was boring. Was that the fat girl? He just walked into no, her. No, he just wa walked into her. Jason was probably like, "Shit, that was easy." Right? And Jason <laughs> went, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Didn't you say she reminded you of your sister? She yeah, she reminds me a lot of my sister, my uh, pothead sister Chrissy. You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, same mannerisms. Shout out Chrissy. Dresses the same. Now, did you know that in Friday the Thirteenth Part Three, Chili? Had a boyfriend named Chuck. Mm -hmm. They were Chuck and Chili. They were supposed to be the Friday the Thirteenth version of Cheech and Chong. Oh, oh man, that's terrible. So in case you didn't, in case you needed to know that, how many of these movies are there? There are twelve. Oh, so the, we get a big one coming we up someday. Yeah. Well, it's been on hold now. Twelve? For, you sat through twelve of these? No, I did. I did not watch 
Jason versus Freddy because I've never, ever, ever been a Freddy Krueger fan. I like Robert England mm -hmm. as an actor, but he's Willie to me on V. I hated Fra uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Jason is the fucking man. That's yes, one of the yeah. That's one of the few uh, horror movies I did see was the original Nightmare on Elm Street. That was cre when the, the the bug came out of her mouth. Woo! That scared the shit out of me. I think that I was in the second. So. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that. You've there's never a close seen up it? of the girl. She's like supposed to be dead in, in a dream state, and all of a sudden, that, that there's a close up of her lips, and this bug just shoots out of her mouth. Listen, like, I'm, oh, oh yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was the first one. It was, it was yeah. a centipede that yes. crawled oh, out of her yeah. mouth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now I remember. I'm a monogamous for ho horror slasher people. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's Jason. And there's nobody. Not even Michael Myers. No, huh? he's boring too. Oh, man. Man. Never. Nah, we're gonna have to school him. Oh please! And you're, you're, look, look, you're the one who you're just, me. I, I you're the one who just spent eight million dollars on, on Jason I paraphernalia. Did. Absolutely, and he is number one. He is but number one. You have one. to acknowledge the other. Did Alice Cooper write a song about any of the other killers? No. No. He Rest didn't. my case. <laughs> and I just saw Alice. Cooper. I know. And guess what he sang? Yeah. Man behind the mask. You didn't talk about, you know, he's wearing a Captain Kirk. And what mask. a show that was, let me tell you. I bet it was. Yeah, Rob Zombie. Oh, wow. Alice Cooper. Yeah, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with the Cooper Phenomenal. show. Phenomenal. Where was the show now? Where did they play? It was down at the Xfinity Center in oh, Mansfield. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful. the uh, former Great Woods. You have a nice night for it? Yeah, fantastic. I took my son down. Good. That just sucks when it rains. I hate that. No, it was fantastic. Beautiful. Pot was in the air. Everyone was chill. Nice. And uh, what a show. Unbelievable. Beautiful. Well, being that we're talking about Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. what's your favorite kill in the Friday the 13th movie? I never saw any of these. Not one of them from beginning to end. You Never. How did you? You were, you were around, uh, how old were you in 1980? Uh, <laughs> 15. 15. And you didn't go see Friday the 13th? No. I was a comedy guy. I did, that did nothing for me. It was a comedy. Are you into horror at all? No, I mean, I, I liked to, growing up, I liked monster movies, but not, right. not horror films. Like Godzilla. Yeah, that's stuff I watched. Or the universal stuff. Okay. Right. I'll tell you right now. I, I told this story to the other guy, guy the other day. I can't believe that. The movie that turned me off horror movies was The Exorcist. Which I, 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 let me just finish now. Okay, okay, okay. Because to me, I said to my aunt, my Auntie Peg. Auntie Peg. Auntie Peg, she, God love her. She was a Southie woman, true to true, true and, true and blue. I told her about this because I couldn't face my father or my mother with this fear. Because when the commercial would come on and the bed was going and everything, I didn't know what it was. So I asked my Auntie Peg, and she told me it means possessed by the devil. It's the first time I ever heard the phrase, possessed by the devil. And I said, well, what does that mean? She says, well, it happened to a girl that I went to school with. Now, this is my Auntie Peg. God rest her soul. She said the girl leapt out of her desk and crawled up the wall, and she saw it. And she said the priest came from the rectory. And took her away, and we never saw her again. Well, she she was starring in The Exorcist. Maybe you, she was a stunt double uh, for uh, listen, Linda I'm, Blair. This is a true story. I would have paid to have seen that. Oh, so now, mm. and I'm, you know, when that came out, I was probably twelve, maybe The Exorcist or whatever. That came out in seventy three. Very impressed. Okay, so the, in seventy three, I was eight. Okay, scared shitless of this. I was only like the third grade. Okay, you know, I, well. And this this fear I carried with me for years. I was in the third grade when Friday the Thirteenth came out. When that when that trailer came on, when we were, my family was watching Mash or something, I left the room. <laughs> it it just frightened me to to think that this could happen. Uh, well, it does happen. And I went to Catholic school, so that was getting drilled into you every day. Yeah, uh, right. And then I find that kids I had gone to school with at that age had seen The Exorcist. Right. At eight years old. I did, and I went to Catholic oh, school. I, I just, my, listen, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just right. talking no, I about get me. It. I was scarred for life from that. No, there's, there's a horror movie that I will never watch again. Well, we all know, I, I know this. I know you're just screwing with me. Go no, ahead. no, what? Jeff you're, knows this. It's Poltergeist. It's Poltergeist. He even knows it's Poltergeist. No, 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 that I could watch. I could watch that movie. That movie fucked with my head so much as a kid. I refuse see? to watch it. We all have I can't even thing. get him to read my stuff on that movie. No, 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 no. He wrote the whole thing about like horror movies and whatnot. Yeah. It's like it's like when I see, if Poltergeist is on, I leave it. the room. I see, I yeah. love Poltergeist. All right. I love it. Yeah. Me too. I, I, I love that I, movie. I will never watch that again. What's your favorite part then in Poltergeist? Oh, my goodness. I I do... It might be kind of wimpy to say, but it was when they were first discovering in the house when the kid was just sliding across the floor because okay. because to me that was like to them this is a big joke, but you know it's going to get worse. Right, right. So that whole innocence <laughs> thing, and when she would leave the room and come back and the chairs were all stacked and stuff. Yep. As cute as it was and funny, you knew that this was 
this was going to end. Oh, out. yeah. Well, that movie you know, was cursed. Too. My favorite is yes, the I long know. shot, the hallway scene when Joe Beth Williams starts running down the hallway. Excellent, yeah. And it just drags. Yeah. And you feel every second yes. that she's running down yeah. that hall. Yeah. You want to see a better hallway scene where Joe Beth Williams is running down the hallway? I do. <laughs> Teachers. Teachers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She wasn't afraid to That's run right. naked down the hall. <laughs> Look at all that wool. For you couldn't sakes, put sweater. your clothes on, Lisa. <laughs> I haven't seen that in forever. Yeah, well, you didn't, she has, doesn't have much going on. Up, no, down, she's down she's down nice she stuff. doesn't, but like uh, she uh, she shows it off, even though she doesn't have much. Oh, like man, in Kramer great, versus man. Kramer too. Kramer versus Kramer. You she don't need gives some giant tits. No, no, no. She gives no. Some, <laughs> she gives some I'm a fan of the boobs, no matter what side. Yeah. But these were just nipples. They were mosquito. No, bites. That's really all you need is the nipples. I mean, well, let's just face you know, it. You, you, you know, you ever see a chick with a real tight T-shirt, no bra? Yes. They're like <laughs> from uh, slap shot. Your nipples like little rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> but this is a fascinating Friday the 13th. If you have a phobia out there, you know, hey. I'm sorry. Since he never saw the movie, I'm going to ask my panel of Friday experts over here. Yeah. I'm yeah, just going to yeah. be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite kill, Jeff? Uh, it would have to be, uh, it's kind of a toss up, but uh, like uh, between the sleeping bag kill against the tree. Unbelievable. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, I think, uh, like, uh, it's he did that. Up. He did that twice, didn't he? He did. He, he did. Uh, he did yeah. It he did. Uh, he used the sleeping bag again in uh, Jason and uh, Jason X. That's right. When there was a virtual reality. Yeah. Crystal Lake. Smoke some pot and have premarital sex. <laughs> <laughs> so they, so that's that's one of your favorites. Yeah, they, that's they a good one. That's a good oh, yeah, well, good yeah, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna give the other one to you actually, oh, oh, <laughs> because I, I, I don't even know what mine is yet. I'm I'm, I'm just going around getting the, getting a consensus of the panel other than Ricky Pittman over there. Yeah, I, got nothing I think he's on YouTube right now looking up kills from Jason. Yeah, how many there. were the? Oh, Mine's that. in part three. Go ahead. It's got to be Andy. Walking on his hands, getting sliced in half. Oh, that, that was a gruesome one. From the ball sack to the chin. Andy, I don't want that beer no more. <laughs> what was she drinking for anyway? She was pregnant. Well, she was only going to be pregnant for another five minutes until Jason killed her. Best he killed, killed a pregnant woman? And, he, and so he killed, he was the first person who aborted someone in a horror movie. Oh, wow. There it is. <laughs> I'd have to say honorable mention has to be the guitar kill in Manhattan. Okay. I love the face, face mash with him. Okay, guitar. my favorite. She was cute. I I, I felt oh, like, why did it, the hell did he kill her? So you were a fan of that movie? The, 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 no, no, oh, like, uh, not movie. really. Uh, like, uh, but I did like. Uh, whenever I watch uh, Jason Goes to Hell, I'm like, why the hell did he kill her? I mean, she was awesome. That that guitar. <laughs> she was like a Joan Jett kind of character. I'm gonna have to say my favorite kill in Friday the Thirteenth, just because it was visually funny and it has a Star Wars connection in a way, CJ. Ooh. Friday the 13th, part six. In the Winnebago, not yours. No, Ricky no, Batman, I wouldn't let him in mine. When member uh, Court was banging the girl from uh, Can't, uh, Can't Buy Me Love, or what, what was that movie called? Yeah. Can't, can't Buy yeah. Me Love. Can't yeah, Buy Me Love. Buy me love. Yeah, Patrick yeah. Dempsey. The, Patrick blonde, De the blonde chick was in that? No. <laughs> no, no. And he grabbed the girl into the toilet. And then he slammed, slammed her, her face, face into the toilet. And no, into the wall of the Winnebago. And it looked like Han Solo frozen. Oh, and yeah, 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 yeah. That was, and besides, she was one of the most fuckable girls in the Friday the 13th <laughs> yeah. movies. You see, I was, I was sure you were going to say uh, when he knocked the guy's block off. Uh, the, oh, okay, that was a good one. That, that's an honorable mention in Friday the 13th when he goes to Manhattan, when he fought when yeah, he, with the black kid that he's boxing, and the black kid thought he was like Sugar Ray Leonard and whatnot, and he starts punching Jason's mask and whatnot. Jason is getting hit like he usually does, and he just rounds up, rope a dope, kid's head falls off and falls into a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> Even my father got a kick out of that. <laughs> he, he loved that scene. I enjoyed it. It was, it was, it was, it was good. good. Mm, sounds like a wonderful time. Well, you know what? The ones to avoid. All right. Well, let's school Ricky all right now on the ones you don't need to watch. All right. The first one you really don't need to watch. Really? Right. It's the mother doing the killings. That's not right. A yeah, cat, not a cat he comes out, of the out of the water. I know that. It's at the an end. origin story. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, an yeah, origin story. Yeah. Kevin Bacon's in it. You know, yeah, that's yeah, just, you yeah. know. That's the right. nudity isn't even that good. Oh. Right. And and he she's grabbed really, by the forehead. Right. And yeah. she's really not that scary, Mrs. Voorhees. Yeah. She's like this crazy, like you know, Jason. She looks like a crazy Mrs. She Brady. signed your machete, yeah, didn't like, she? Yes. Yeah. She. She was one of the first people to sign it. Yeah. You have to have her on the machete, though. You have to. Yep. Yep. I hope Sean's going to be impressed to see it. Oh, that's true. Now, in the second one, that's the second one to me is the most frightening. Friday and it's called Friday, Friday the Thirteenth Part, Part two. two. Okay, and it was filmed in Connecticut, and because Jason is in it, because Jason is in it, yeah. and Jason's now an adult, 
and he's going around, you know, it's a love story when you really think about it. Jason is out there avenging his mother's death. Do they ever say where he got the mask from? This is yes, they do. Great, <laughs> all excited when I say that. Yes, yes, oh, that's a yes they do. <laughs> all right, in the second one, Friday the Thirteenth Part Two, yeah. he's Quasimodo. He has like a potato sack over his head with one eye. Ah, all right, like the town that feared sundown. And then he gets that removed at the end of Friday the Thirteenth Part Two by Ginny and uh, what was his name, Paul? Yeah, Paul. Uh, yeah. Where's Paul? Yeah, Paul, you know, Paul Holt. Paul Holt. Oh, all right. So. All of Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th, part two, three, and four, all take place supposedly over the same weekend. Really? Even, though, yeah. even though Jason is a metamorphosis, I don't know if he's like part Incredible Hulk or something. Because he gets, doesn't he get killed at the end of each one of them? Well, he got a, he got a machete through the uh, shoulder in the second one. So that was not really a life-threatening uh, maneuver. I was going to say, that's almost a laughable. He can't be killed, though. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, I, that much he's I knew. Yeah. So this, the third one, He's now all jacked up, and he's he kind of he's all green and ugly looking. Yeah, why did he get so muscular? Because he was a, he was a mongoloid, and he drowned, and he got deformed and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That happens. So he's walking around killing people in the third one without a mask on. He doesn't have a mask. No on. mask. No mask. Well, we don't see his face. So then there's this kid, Shelly. Shelly is this little, the fat kid in the movie who always gets right. made fun of, and he always pulling practical jokes on people pretending that he's dying. Mm. And he had a scuba outfit. Uh -huh. For some weird reason, he had a hockey mask with a scuba outfit, and he popped up to scare Vera, who, in my opinion, is the hottest Friday girl ever. Vera. Vera. And he kills Shelly off camera. We don't know, see uh, Shelly's murder. Mm -hmm. And Vera is in the water getting Shelly's wallet because it fell out of his pocket when he was in the scuba gear. Mm -hmm. And a man walks out with a hockey mask on and a, and a, and a, spear, gun. a spear gun okay. and puts the spear <laughs> right through her eye. Oh, so she's right. the first kill, kill ever kill. with the hockey mask. That's right. See, all, all and Jason was out. loving it. Uh, you yeah. could see he, he had a walk to it. When he right. put, a, put that mask <laughs> on, he was like, yeah. Oh, he, yeah. Was, he, he was complete. Oh, yeah. He was walking works, tall yeah. with that mask. Right. It was his cowboy hat. Because I have definitely have seen Absolutely. parts of this. Like, I've been channel surfing and it was on us. All right, let me see. And I remember seeing that scene with so the spear gun. That was is the was that Wasn't that in 3D? It was in 3D. Okay, see? I'm not that was the very first kill of the hockey mask. Okay. With the, yeah, with the mask on. Yep. Now, do all of these take place on Friday the 13th? No. The, the, so Friday the 13th isn't even like part of the story. It's just the title like kids, of the, Don't go up to Can Crystal Lake because you know what happened last Friday the 13th. Up it's there. a play on being unlucky. Gotcha. All right. That's fine. But I just want to make sure. I mean, they're calling. They're going out of their way to make 12 of these fuckers. I mean. Almost 13. 13. Mm -hmm. It's Almost gonna 13. happen. It's gonna happen. Now, it has to. Friday the Thirteenth Part Three was the very first Friday the Thirteenth I ever saw in the theater. <clears throat> now I have a funny story for this. It came out in August of 1982, and it was a 3D movie as we established. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my mother heard about it, and she thought it was going to be like oh, one of those no, Vincent no, no, Price no, 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 House no, of no, Wax no, movies. No, uh oh, no, no, okay. No. I was 11 years old. My sister was eight. My mother took us down to the Granada Theater in Malden <laughs> for a seven o'clock uh, evening show, not matinee, but an evening showing on a Tuesday night in October. We waited Love a couple it. months. Oh. It was fall. It was windy. The, nice. the leaves were blowing Whoa. everywhere. I knew nothing about this. My mother obviously knew nothing about it. We went to the box office, and the woman working the box office goes, you really want to bring these kids into this? She's like, it's a 3D movie. It's like a Vincent Price Isn't thing. Is Vincent Price in this? <laughs> and, 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 and she was, like, and she actually said that. And the lady was like, no. Well, we want to see it anyway. Goes, okay. Yeah. Your call. We get in there. It's, and it said, unless accompanied by a, a parent or guardian. It's all teenagers in there. Nice. All right? yeah, yeah. So my mother's like, oh, oh, I was a teenager when I saw House of Wax in like 1955 <laughs> or whatever it was. Movie starts rolling, and the first thing they show is the ending of part two to set up part three. Okay. Right? So there really wasn't anything really horrible in that, Jeff, right? I mean, no, no, no not really, aside from his flesh wound in the shoulder. Right. So we get there, and it's a teenage romp, and, you know, they're, they're talking about drugs and sex and whatnot. My mother's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then when the shit hits the fan, <laughs> the hand went over my sister's eyes. You know, and she's trying to peek out over there. I'm like, like, like wide eyed, like this, this is fucking great. People are getting killed. People are getting killed as a nut with a hockey mask. I got I, eyeballs flying boom. out right, at me. Right. Now, I will admit. <laughs> did you have the glasses on? We did have the glasses on. Oh, wow. I will admit, when we got home, it did have a psychological 
warfare on my mind. I hope so. I would not go upstairs <laughs> until I, I, thought, no, mind you, I was only 11. Yeah, I'm not I laughing. Up, I'm just like, I was only 11 years old. So I went upstairs when the light was on and I thought about it all night long, the yeah. whole movie. But it didn't scare me. It fascinated me. Yeah. And then the next day when I was, it was, it was in what, fifth or sixth grade. One of the kids I sat next to had Fangoria magazine. Great magazine. Oh, all yeah, right? always a fan. And I said, I said, dude, I saw Friday the 13th. Oh, the one in 3D? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, oh, I love those movies. He took out, out of his desk, why he had Fangoria in his desk, I have no idea. Nice. And he gave me the lore of Jason. Mm. And I was like, I need to know everything there is to know about this character. <laughs> so be, thanks to my mother, I became a Friday the 13th fan. There you go. Yeah, that's there a nice you go. story. So it, it, you know, it's, it was you know, my mother was petrified and, and modified. Right there. But fortunately, that was one of the movies that didn't have a, that much nudity. It only had that girl showering. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Side boob. Yeah, side boob in it, and she became a newscaster. <laughs> really? That woman. Her last name is Savage. I forgot what her first name is. I think it. Uh, no, no, no. It's not Tracy. Randy. No, Tracy <laughs> Savage. Tracy Savage. You Tracy are correct. Savage. You are correct. And she's still to this day, when she has news jobs, people find her and send her shit to get signed for Friday the 13th. <laughs> That's wow. great. Right. <clears throat> That's cool, though. During the pandemic, our friend Toop found uh, Vera, the girl who was killed by the, by the, by the hockey mask. Yeah. I love this girl. She's my perfect type. And he found her address, and he, he sent a picture down. And uh, if it's on, the, he's looking on the screen right now. There it is. TC, God bless. Uh, oh, she sent it back. Catherine Parks, Vera. Yeah. Keep Toop away from me. Keep Toop away. But <laughs> she sent it right back to you quick, too. It was. Uh, he, I don't know how he found her. She lives somewhere in Florida. Right. He found her address. And I was like, he's like, I go, you think it's her? And I go, well, that's kind of a common name. Lo and behold, Phenomenal. it came back in like two weeks. Sure that's so awesome. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's good. He's probably the only one that answered. Somewhere that. in Florida. That's probably, we yeah. probably why she appeared in Weekend at Bernie's. They, oh, <laughs> probably. Was Weekend at Bernie's? <laughs> yeah, she was, uh, remember, the, remember the hooker that, uh, his girlfriend that uh, fucked him when he was oh. dead? <laughs> And I, her, I, and I saw her. And I saw her in a couple. I saw her in a couple episodes of The Love Boat too. <laughs> Never better. Remember, we had that girl down here was as a stylist. She looked like her. Oh yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, Liz, Liz, <laughs> stylist Liz. Stylist yeah. Liz. Yeah. her. So that I was the first one you saw. <laughs> J J Where was Jason that night? Jesus. <laughs> was she the third victim killed with the hockey mask? What about you, Jesse? J? Why, why do you like Friday the Thirteenth so much? Oh, ever since Manhattan. That was the first one I saw in theaters. Where do you Eight. wait? You wait, wait until 1989? Yeah, yeah. Um, just couldn't get into the rated R movies with my parents. They just wouldn't let me get out. Should, you should have known me back then. My grandfather would have taken you. Took me I to know, all the rated Police R movies. Academy, Friday the 13th. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop, Porky's. There's nothing like Jason. I mean, this is what the kids today don't understand. The or, or Ricky cheesy, huh? gritty horror feel in that franchise is second to none. I mean, I'm a Halloween fan. I like... I like Friday the 13th uh, better than most of the series that are out there, including, you know, all of the heavy hitters coming out of the 80s because he's <clears throat> iconic, too. He is. There's nothing like him. Um, he's immediately recognizable by the uh, by the hockey mask and the uh, just the storylines are just so over the top with being, you know, what the, the camp council is stuck over at the lake and he's stalking them and then. They expanded on that when he came to New York City, and I don't know. It's just fun for me as a kid to watch, and I've just always been a fan ever since. I am. The one in Manhattan could have been longer in Manhattan, though. Yeah, it was like a Dracula. It was like it was like, like it was like the Love Boat, the and then yeah. You know what? Been really cool. It was you know? it was there, it, the franchise is owned by Paramount Pictures. How cool of this would have been if Jason came to Manhattan and ran into the Warriors. <laughs> My money's on the Warriors. Oh, well, I'd probably. I mean, yeah, I think you know they they they, they were there was almost a psycho as Jason. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> I think I think they need to do, bring Jason into a different crossover. Like, was it you that sent me that video of the uh, of the Radio Shack ad? Oh, the other day yeah, from yeah. all the uh, the <clears throat> stuff from the eighties. Jason was in. That's it. right. That's right. <laughs> that's was, a great commercial. I love that Ponch and John. I knew you would like the that. Hulkster. Yep. 
Um, who else was in there? Norman Cliff were in that's there. Well, Norman Cliff Clavin was in there. I definitely saw Cliff Clavin. I saw it. I got to send this to TC. <clears throat> wow, that's I love that. That was you've you seen that video, CJ? That commercial? No, back that in was the Super Bowl <clears throat> commercial, right? I think it was. Oh, that that would make sense. Yeah, back in like I'm going to say that was like ninety. Yeah, I, guess, yeah, I remember yeah. seeing Jason. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I gave you the double take. I was yeah. like, wow. That was cool. <laughs> they had a Radio Shack at it. Every 80s iconic character. Was Mr. T in that? Oh, wait a he second. He had to have been. Yeah, I posted that on Twitter. Okay, okay. Now, okay. Yeah, now I'm following you. Yeah, 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 because uh, Slaughter was in it. Hulk was in it. Right. Uh, if you look in the back, uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates are in it. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. They got the... Um, I got to watch it again closer. Yeah, they, they have everyone come in, and uh, yeah, Paunch is in it. Um, they got the Time Machine. So basically, Ecto One. Just a, chi- a chill lineup. Was Chuck, they, and they didn't pick Mike Myers. <laughs> of course, you know why? Well, cause because Jason's Jason better. is more iconic. Kind of, or, or Freddy Krueger. Cool. See, and that's the thing. I mean, I, I, I absolutely love the Halloween franchise. Mm-hmm. Michael Myers is, is fantastic. Jamie Lee Curtis. Scared the shit out of me. John Carpenter made that movie. Jamie Lee Curtis scared the shit out of you? No, no. Because she does me now. (laughs) Yeah, lately. (laughs) Because we're also handsome. But uh, (laughs) at least we were born with one unit. That's true. That's true. That's true. Something about Jason and the hockey mask that sticks out. And he is just the, he's the face of horror movies from that era. I get you. And he's, what changed. We're going down to see a couple of the guys that were in those movies and Sean S. Cunningham. That's right. As we're recording this, this is the 12th of September, right the day before Friday the 13th. And this coming weekend, we're going to be going out to the DCU Center in beautiful Worcester, Massachusetts to see... <laughs> beautiful Worcester, Mass. Yeah. It is beautiful Worcester, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, may, maybe the town square. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe we were point. going. It was cold and miserable last time we went out there. Which was, in, it was March 11th, 2023. Jeez. Wow. Uh, for going, we went to George's Coney Island hot dog. Maybe Delicious if they're open, we have to stop in there for a little bite. You really should. But we're going down to see some horror legends. We're going to see Sean S. Cunningham. You know who Sean S. Cunningham is? No. He is the George Lucas of Crystal Lake. He created Friday the 13th. Oh, okay. And I'm going to get him signed on a hockey mask. Mm. And then there's Jason, uh, not Jason, Derek Mears, who played Jason in the reboot. And then there's Ari Lehman, who was the kid who jumped out of the end of the original Friday the 13th. And then there's Warrington Gillette, who jumped through the window. Oh. And Friday Warrington Thir- Gillette. Warrington Gillette. It's, yeah, it's a very nice, it's a very uh, dignified name for a, yeah. for a Jason Voorhees. Yeah, it really is. is. And Sounds there's like other people there, too. <laughs> Eli Roth's going to be there. I don't care about him. He wasn't afraid. But Jeff, he does. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, like, uh, you I'm don't like gonna... Eli? No. Why? Because he, he wasn't Friday the 13th. Now, there's a oh. movie I... Come on. Oddly, I sat through The Human Centipede. Oddly. Oddly. That's yeah. one movie that I shot off halfway through. <laughs> Yeah, I see, just couldn't take I, it. I won't see Jason. I couldn't take it. But I had to see how this is was going to Is that the movie with the guy with the fucked up eyes? No. The bulging the, eyes? I don't, all I remember was just the disgusting idea of the film. I really kind of psychologically blocked a lot of it. You don't know about this? He sews no, the yeah, people's no. mouths to their yeah, anuses. To their asses, yeah. yeah. Isn't there a guy with bulging eyes in that movie? Uh, that's the uh, dentist that's the second one. Bernstein. The second one, oh, uh, like a... Uh, shit, I didn't like even a, know there was yeah, a... What the fuck? Yeah, the, the, the human centipede, too. <laughs> they got uh, they uh, they got this of weird course. German actor with... Uh, the, the, he, yeah, he looked like the, he looked like the doctor from Cannonball Run. <laughs> he looked like a frog having his friggin' head squeezed. Yeah, but... He was at one of these rock and shock conventions. Before. Uh, and people just stayed the hell away from him. People were well, like afraid of the dude. <laughs> he probably hangs around with Augustus Gloop from Germany. Yeah, and I no. also sat through the uh, Hostel. The Hostel. Both of them. And that, that was, was a sick movie. Yeah. I like those. So, they yeah. were good. Yeah, so for, for me to be able to do that, so a lot of pussy. I just, <laughs> I just never got around to the Friday the 13th. I've right, been Friday the 13th. You know what my favorite horror movie is after Friday the 13th? Like slasher, like, you know, goofy, wacky, wacky uh, horror uh, shit. No. Jeff will know. Texas Chainsaw 2. You got it. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, because I've seen Texas Chainsaw 2. I'm glad 1. you brought up uh, <laughs> like, uh, Texas Chainsaw 2 because uh, like Lou Perryman, the guy who played uh, Lefty in that, was uh, actually in Poltergeist. And you sang the, the Fry song with him. Oh, yeah. The, well, however it went and everything, but we were singing along <laughs> to it and everything. But yeah, he was, uh, he was in Poltergeist. He played, uh, he played Bluto. Great, Mrs. Freeling. You sure make good coffee. <laughs> and that was the day you got your picture taken with Caroline Williams, who oh, played yeah. Stretch in Texas, too. And if I find the picture, it's on the screen right now. You almost died that day. 
Oh, yeah, I wasn't feeling uh, too, like uh, the, the bus ride didn't do me too good. I was all hungover and everything. And she was very concerned and everything. Well, you were sweating, sweating like you were having a heart attack. And the hotel was like a million degrees, and you had on this fucking Irish sweater. <laughs> so you were dying. You were like, it was like a sauna. Remember we had to drag you outside in beautiful Secaucus, New Jersey? Yep, yep, I did and everything. And uh, like, But uh, Caroline was very kind. Very you, yes. it, it, Hopefully I can find this picture, because you can see Jeff physically sweating in this picture. Um, it was, but you had a fucking smile on your face a mile long. Oh, yeah. She was uh, very, very friendly. Uh, she, uh, she was like, uh, let, uh, she, uh, she let me put her arms around her. She let me grab her ass. I mean, she really liked me. And, and wasn't that was also the day, was that the day you got Betsy Palmer to sign you, Met Machete? Uh, because she was there. I uh, no, uh, I got her. She uh, she took a picture uh, that day. She uh, retook the picture because the day I had her sign them in the machete, uh, it was like uh, the like uh, I, I got my wallet stolen. Oh, okay. So that was a rock and shock then. Yeah, because the one in Secaucus, New and Jersey. I explained my situation. I was like, remember me from the rock and shock? Guess what happened? I got my uh, mach- I got my wallet stolen, and I need a new picture. And she gave me an- another picture on the house and everything. She was. I mean, for being a for Crazy person in those movies. She was like, you know, the what's that? The the old mother Hubbard who lived in the shoe there. Yeah, that's what she was like. She would like make you cookies and whatnot. Yeah, for playing this like insane killer. Mm -hmm. She was like the one of the nicest ladies in the world. So she wasn't an insane killer in real life. No, no, not that day anyway. Okay, unbelievable. I'm getting through my earpiece. We're gonna take a big time commercial break. Big time. And we'll be back after this. Hi, this is Quincy Briscoe. To all my fans. Don't drink and drive. Alrighty, welcome back from that big time commercial break. Quincy Briscoe is off camera right now, or off microphone right now. And he's sitting over there. Quincy, what are you drinking over there? Is that some sort of imported milk? Right now it's water, but I got milk over here too. Okay, because you have like three or four gallons. Are you going Four gallons over there. Get, get over here on the microphone for a second. Are you going on some trip somewhere? No, just a little shopping. What, four gallons of milk? Here, get on the microphone here. You know that those, those gallons have expiration dates on. Do you drink it by the date? Oh, I checked that one. Um, get on the microphone for a right, second. Well, I'm, I'm to find Just have Ricky turn yeah, his yeah. and talk into it. There you go. Right there. <laughs> now, are well, you I a big in... cereal guy? What kind of Are cereal? you a cereal killer? No, 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 like uh, so, uh, you eat a, a lot of cereal at the house. I mean, I, I, I'm. Part- I used to like yeah. uh, in my times, yeah. Whis- I mean, Whis- yeah. Why? Well, yeah. yeah. First of all, uh, I milk. Just, uh, I just, uh, yeah, like, uh, hey, uh, like, uh, you dr- actually drink all that milk. It doesn't go to waste. It's just no, amazing. it doesn't. You know, because uh, I'll have milk sandwiches, chips, coffees. You know, and because when when you're having a cookout, hosting a, a good show, and we all are good hosts, only the best. Then we only want to serve the very best. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Quincy. That was a fantastic. We'll bring you in at the end of the program. We always get around to food, don't we? We all, well, Quincy's always hungry every time we do something. I got to tell you though, I had I had probably Tosh Lent prep probably the worst meal. What was that? I have ever had in my life tonight. What was oh, it? Oh, no. And I told her. <laughs> so I got guts. So you'll be living well, in the Winnebago tonight like, is what well, you're saying. I, and I, uh, hamburger Helper was on sale. We, we have never, ever in our lives used Hamburger Helper. I will say we used Tuna Helper because in the summertime, I said, wouldn't it be nice, you know, a little pasta with tuna? And it was good. You mix a little tuna fish with the Tuna Helper and it was good. So hamburger helper was on sale, but we don't really eat hamburger that much. So she made it with ground turkey. That wasn't the killer. It was just <laughs> be the killer for it, me. It was bogus from the word go. It uh-huh. was one of the most disgusting meals I ever had in my life. It must look like a sloppy Joe. It, it did, and, and, I, and I've had sloppy Joes, and she'll make those with ground turkey with the man, which makes once in a blue moon we'll have something like that, and it's not bad. She so don't do beef. We, we, Rare. Once a, if we're gonna make meatballs for the Sunday sauce. It's always going to be beef, but sure. you know. But it, cousin Eddie, yeah, loved that, I was just about to helper. say that. that yeah, he I think it would have been better on its own. Like he goes, I think it does fine by itself. <laughs> I was like, I, I think it probably would have. The pasta wasn't even cooked. Ouch! It was was beyond. And, and she's dente. Italian. I'm telling you, and, that, and I don't think it had any. Is that against her. the Italian race? And then they said you can add 
like some tomato sauce, like a jad tomato sauce, a little bit of that. Right. It. She had a can of pastine pizza sauce. Oh, oh no! God. What the hell? That was so salty and so disgusting. This and is I what told, you have for dinner. Yeah. And I, that's why I, had, I said, I, I said, I said, put it this way. She goes, what did you think? I said, well, put it this way. I hope Quincy did not forget to buy the cheese balls tonight. <laughs> and he <laughs> never does. <laughs> and he never does. Just, and, I mean, I don't want to be ungrateful and everything. And, and I was like, look, at, you can look at me. I, I eat very well. And she's a good cook. But this one, I just had to be honest with her. This was, this was a low point. If you're listening to this podcast, you can go to my social media, which is called at After Hours TC on Twitter yeah. or X. I'm going to get my point of view of the Quincy's Dairy yeah. on the other side of the podcast penthouse. Don't worry, CJ. You're not in the shot here. I just want to see from my vantage point all the way across the penthouse. Yeah. It's, it's true. We have four gallons of milk and cheese balls. Yeah. Thank that- God they were the <laughs> cheese balls were here. I mean, you're going to have to take a stool soft on Quincy. Oof. And I had two uh, antacids after I ate. Did you? Do, where were they? Tums to tums, tums to tums. No, I did the CVS chewable brand. Have you ever seen those? What, what flavor? The, the delicious, the rainbow flavor, all the tropical fruit. Oh uh, is, are they good as Flintstone chewables? They're, to me, they're better. Okay. Very creamy finish, nice Ooh. and delicious. But this meal was just not C- good. Cream pie? Huh? Different. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, though, to make up for it, we're going to go to Nappy, my favorite Italian restaurant in Medford. There you what go. What are you going to have? Well, I usually get the vo- the pork chop vinegar peppers with potatoes. Did you almost say the Voorhees? I, I think I did. I think it's in my <laughs> I mind. I love though. it. See, we're already waiting. You, you're wearing me down. Yeah. But um, I'm the pork chop vinegar peppers with uh, potatoes. I might Ooh. get that. What kind of potatoes? They just slice potatoes and they roast them. Ooh. Everything together. And uh, the, what, the, the, the vinegar sauce. Where in Mepha is it? Right on Main Street. As you get close to 93, the, the, the uh, circle there. Right. Mm. On the right-hand side as you head that way. It's nappy. There's no menu. They'll tell you the, the proteins they have for the night and the different kind of ways they can do it. And you say, well, can you do this? And they'll, right. yeah, yeah, we'll do it. That's kind of like Vesuvio on The Sopranos. Exactly. Come right. on, do, just do that whole thing. Like, he has menus, but for the guys, he does there something different. But, um, so I like it. And they have a, an appetizer called Shrimp Joey. It looks like, oh. it tastes like they they prepped this with a little bit of Sambuca in the sauce because it's nice. got kind of a hit. I love food. There. Oh, and this place is, is phenomenal. No, it's bring your own booze. So yeah. bring a nice bottle of Chianti. Oh, like grounds up the yeah. beach. There yeah. you go. And it's, and it's always cheap because you don't have to buy booze and everything. There you go. But, uh, you know, sometimes Tasha will do the chicken, um, uh, what's it with the with the capers and everything? I can't think of the name. Masala. Of it. No, that's like a mushroom sauce that's kind of sweeter. This is, uh, I can't think of it anyway, but this, it's just good. So that's what we're going to make up for that. There okay, good. Well, nice. yeah, there you go. I hope it's delicious. Mm. Hey, it'll be better than the shit on here tonight. Well, <laughs> I, I, you know, usually you only get like a handful of cheese balls. Yeah. You got a giant cup yeah, full of cheese I, balls I, I, tonight. I was really hungry, so tonight I'll go yeah, home. Oh, oh, look, look Quincy oh. Briscoe is going across the penthouse. Make me hungry with all this talk. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to bring, bring over the cheese. And he is, ladies and gentlemen. He's bringing over the giant thing of cheese balls. How come you don't need them with a toothpick like Raymond? Two <laughs> I'm saving my appetite for tomorrow too. I'm getting the chicken and shrimp carbonara. No, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I get the rest, but because uh, Raymond, old Raymond, needed eight, exactly eight cheese balls. Uh, to Where grade. are you getting this chicken carbonara? <laughs> We're oh gonna eat God. at the Olive Garden tomorrow, Friday the thirteenth. Oh. Tomorrow, I've been married twenty-one years, so a shout out to my wife Michelle. Twenty-one nice. years of the rundown. Veinte y uno. So, yeah. I know, Quincy. I don't want any great cheese balls right now. They're all over the podcast yeah. penthouse table. Thanks, thanks a lot, There's buddy. Cheese dust everywhere. Just thank just, you. Just snort it. <laughs> no, not, you're, not snorting, you're not snorting Ricky Bittman. I said the cheese. You know what we got to we got to do that. That is a giant tub of cheese balls. Mm. Well, this is the only way to go. Do we know how many cheese balls are in that tub? If you well, have to guess. Well, first of all, this is the only way to go because we love cheese balls. This is like a 23 ounce, uh, one pound. So I'm like with some, there's maybe That's more than one pound. One pound, seven ounces. Uh, well, technically, ladies and gentlemen. And technically, he just read it. It's one pound, seven ounces. It says it right there. One pound, seven ounces. So one pound. Seven ounces. 200, maybe 300 at the most. Oh, way more than that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say there's probably about six or 700 in there. Mm-hmm. Take a guess. Have fun with it, ladies and gentlemen. Take yeah. a guess. Maybe, maybe you can do that on a future okay. episode. You that can just 146. Yeah. We can. Definitely. And these are made from the Utz Company. Utz. 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 Good chips. Good Utz. salt and vinegar chips made by Utz. <laughs> when I went to see the Sox play the Baltimore Orioles down in Baltimore, out my hotel window, I could see the Utz factory. Big sign. Utz. Really? Uh-huh. Did you go in and get any free samples? No. 
but I was on TV <laughs> eating French fries. All of a sudden, our phones start lighting up, and they're like telling uh, Tasha and every, Ricky's on television. I'm like, what are you talking about? They had the camera on me as I was dropping boardwalk fries into my mouth. Nice. And according <laughs> to my brother-in-law, I said, that young man, this was a while ago, is really enjoying those fries. <laughs> Jerry Remy said that. Good for Jerry Remy. I wonder if I had tape of it, but I don't. Did they have tape back in those days? It wasn't that long ago. Oh, it was right. probably like in the early 2000s. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. What? I, I'm not used to sharing a mic. I know you're not used to sharing a mic. <laughs> well, don't blame me. Blame the people at Rode because they only made a podcast machine with four microphones. Yeah. Screw you. Quincy, what, what are you like a waiter tonight? What are you doing? What well, are you, what? You're not going to have any of the cheese balls? I already had some already. Imagine if you went yeah, to a restaurant you, you and he's here. walking around to tables. <laughs> cheese balls? <laughs> he dumps Jeff, them into Jeff a Dixie brought cup. his own clam bake tray. <laughs> I think uh, the, the fans would love it. I Don't think, you think? I, I think uh, Walk around the restaurant with these like, and the fans would say. I know a lot of people that would love it. Tasha and her sisters love you. Let's take well, a, walk here. It's like, well, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's take a picture of Quincy and his cheese balls for the people out there. Who want to see this? <clears throat> Get over here. I can't go down all the end of the table down there. The zoom lens on you. Sure. All right. Oh. What's going on here? We're in the penthouse. What are yeah. they flying around in helicopters? All right. <laughs> move, move back, Quincy, so we can get a big, better move, move, picture. Move. There we go. Right there. All right. Hold your, hold, hold your cheese balls up. <laughs> all right. Hold your cheese balls up. All right. There you go. Right. You can sit back down. Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, did I tell you who I'm going to meet in November? Who? Emmy Rossum. Oh, because oh, you're doing the show. She's going to be on Broadway. I told you what might sell with that deal. Oh, Don't you well, have a love and hate relationship with this woman? I have a love and hate relationship with most of the people I fantasize about. No, that's true. <laughs> I love that I wish I was there with them, but I hate that, you know, they're not. But Now, what, why do you love her so much? It's just her look. Yeah, no, I'll it, give it to him. He's right. It's her look, and she doesn't look like... I, I'm a brunette guy. Right. Always have I been since, since Jacqueline Smith when I was six years old. I had okay. a sticker of, of her on my bed, and I've always been attracted to brunettes, 100%. And there's a certain type of brunette, you know, that gets me going. And Emmy Rossum falls into that category. When I saw, far, first saw her right. in 2003 in Mystic River, yeah. well, when she was Sean Penn's daughter, the one I got whacked, uh, got killed in the movie, I was like, who is this talent? And then I saw her in The Day After Tomorrow, and I was just like, I'm hooked on this chick. That girl right there, right there. There's just something about her. Yeah, I, actually, I don't know, man. And actually, I like her better when she's Fiona, mm -hmm. not all dolled up yep. like she is in real life. No, we we meeting her? She's on Broadway in November. You're going down in New York? Yeah. <laughs> Just for her? 100%. It's the only reason I'm going. Her in a pair of cutoff jeans and like uh, the Converse sneakers and a t-shirt? Right. With no bra. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I hope Little you get her. rocks. I hope I get her, too. You know, I'm, I'm going down to get an autograph, people. I'm not going to be going like, you know, kidnapping and duct taping at a wall somewhere. Uh, I'm pretty deep into the penultimate season of Shameless. Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? It's just not the same. But I, 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 I want to know what's going to... We're at the point where uh, uh, Ian and Mickey are out of jail, and they're going to do away with the parole officer. Played Very well played by Rachel Dretch of Saturday Night Live. She plays that corrupt parole officer mm -hmm. who's taking advantage of them, and they just decided at the end of this last episode they're going to kill her. So I hope they do because it's a despicable character. You have to find out what happens. We're not letting the cat out. Of no, no, don't because I really am enjoying this. I mean, I have to take it to the end now. But there's just something missing. It's like when they would go from story to story. Right. I knew at some point they're going to go back to uh, Fiona, but there's just no Fiona. Now every time you watch uh, Shameless, when you look at Lip, don't you see uh, Gene Wilder? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I noticed that when uh, he was 100%. in that, that bear show. Which, by the way, that bear show, I think, in my one say right now, I think it jumped the shock. Is it better than the Bad News Bears? No, God, which I just watched recently. I heard you did yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good movie. Now, which one is your favorite? The first one, obviously. Absolutely, Walter Matthau, hands down, still holds up to today. You don't like the second? Do you like the second one, William Devane? I like William Devane. I'm a fan, but <clears throat> it just wasn't. It just didn't hold the same. I enjoyed that one because that was. I think that was the first Bad News Bears I saw. Yeah, I, I get it. I, like, I get it. Right, but the first one. But is, the first one is still a classic. It's, it's a work of art. Yeah, I saw really like uh, the, the, the the Revere Drive-In, and I saw Breaking Training. Yeah, let them play. Yeah, and they go to Japan with Tony Curtis. Oh, that was horrible! Horrible! That was like, why is every movie that that had a franchise back in the day number three is always the worst? Yeah, that's true. Superman. Well, actually, Superman three and four kind of go. <laughs> right, Jaws three yeah. is horrible. Yep. Um, 
in, in, in Police Brad, Academy Three. Yep. Oh, you don't have been fighting words with Jim. Oh, what? What? Yeah, three got me going. Uh, three was the beginning of Bob. Go ahead. I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. The only reason why we didn't like Jaws Three because it doesn't have a Brody. It right? Did, it right. Did, no, it did have a Brody. It had Sean and Michael Brody. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't have um, Chief Brody. Brody. The the Chief Brody. Oh, when you when you made a beeline over here, I thought you were easily going to say Smoking the Bandit Three. No, oh, no. Um, well, okay. I love. Well, I like Smoking the Damn Band Part Three, but only because it has. Buford G. Justice. Right. You, I will admit, Smoking the Bandit 3 is horrible as you just you, uh, you orgasm cheese ball dust. dust all over your wrist. <laughs> <laughs> but right. you know what part 3 didn't suck? Friday the 13th. Because it was in 3D. That's right. Uh, well, what was your favorite character in that, in part 3? Oh, Friday the 13th? Yeah. Vera. Vera the whore. Don't be, don't be making fun of Vera the whore. Well, <laughs> Jason, movies, of course. If you're going to make part 2 and part 3 movies... Yeah. Then it has to have your uh, flavor characters. Okay. Otherwise, the okay, movie. I understand, but the bandit wasn't really in for uh, smoking the bandit part three. No. No. Um, snowman. Sh- sh- the snowman was the bandit. I'm the going sp- to be the bandit. I'm going to be the bandit. Back but to, to me, the future part three. <laughs> but. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's not. Wrong. All right. But in smoking the bandit three. Right. Without question, I laughed more, and Jeff Youth can detest oh, this. Oh, sure, yeah. Smoking the Bandit 3 was probably the funniest of all of them. Yeah. Just the shit Jackie Gleason was yeah. saying in that movie. I think he just ad-libbed the whole entire movie. Huh? Mm-hmm. You pig bladder and all this other stuff. <laughs> other than that, the movie was shit. I'm sorry, Quentin. Well, wow. that's how you write the movie. If the movie, if you're going to make two or, two or three parters and any kind, all these good movies, right. it's got to have your favorite characters. <clears throat> Is, am I not right? Right. Yeah, that's why I you know your watch. favorite character, Cricket Crotch. But uh, yeah, yeah, Paul Williams, <laughs> but that, that, that's what he called them, a Cricket little Crotch. Little Enos. Well, there you go. Uh, cricket Crotch. Yeah, Little Enos. <laughs> you probably like that. Who was that woman that was chasing around uh, Junior and that and, and, and Buford? She's a famous, uh, she's a stunt double. She, uh, she She's in all kinds of movies in L.A. and everything. But she's, uh, yeah, she, I, I, she, Judy something and everything. But I've seen her in other movies. Okay. But, yeah, but, but Speaking of stuntmen, you know who's still alive? Lee Majors. Well, Lee Majors is still alive. Still alive. Lee Majors, um, how about, uh, who else? Did that said, what good actors, what good stuntmen are still living right I'm now? I'm telling you right now, because he's a milestone. He's almost 100 years old. I think I know the answer to this. And let's, let's see, uh, quiet on the set, Jeff. Chongo. Uh-oh, you Chongo! M- you mind-reading motherfucker. Yes, it was Chongo. Almost 100, huh? Chongo was a stuntman before he was an actor. That would make sense. Very athletic. I mean, like, well, may I ask you this? Very important. Very, very. What came first, the stuntman or Chongo on the banana splits? The stuntman, obviously. Yeah, Charlie Chaplin. Can you give us a Chongo impersonation? Oh my God. That's how Chongo talked. It's not as good as Mario's no, Chongo. No, no, no. no. Well, uh, is, no that, is that close enough? No, it's close enough for Briscoe work. Yeah. Well, I now, do you want to hear uh, Quentin Tarantino recently weighed in on the whole trilogy of movies and how? Things t- traditionally get worse. Was Chongo in it? <laughs> but the one trilogy that got better was a Fistful of Dollars, A Few Dollars More, and okay. Good and the Bad and the Ugly. I believe, yeah. And he also brought into, uh, into the discussion the three Toy Stories. Now, I know there was four. Right. And he won't watch four. I they saw that clip. stopped at three. Because he said, you already told the story in three. It's over. I don't need to know anything. You made the perfect movie for that franchise. It's over. He mm-hmm. won't watch four. Right. Even with his son. He will not watch uh, Toy Story Four. Okay. And Rocky Three got well, Rocky Three wasn't horrible. wasn't as good as Rocky One, but it was entertaining. Rocky Three was entertaining. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, that's where Rocky became a superhero. Yeah, it was like the first '80s right. like <clears throat> sort of iconic thing. Right. Know? I mean, any any Thunderlips, the Hulkster. Yeah. I mean, how can you beat that? It's, uh, and uh, gave a Survivor the the, right. the, the eye of the tiger. I'll the, never forget that. We me, me and my buddies were at the Red Sox game. It great rained out. We were in the bleachers. We were sitting way up the top under that big giant old scoreboard they used to have, and it started pouring. They called the game. We ran from Fenway Park to the Heinz 57. The, not the Heinz. The, catch up. You ran to catch up. The 57th. 
Theater, wasn't it? Was it yes, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I ran all the way there, right. and uh, that's where we saw. We caught it just as it opened. We went in, got our tickets, and sat down, and started Rocky. That I mean, Rocky One was obviously a, a brilliant movie, best yeah. picture. Rocky Two was a great sequel, but people didn't become Rocky fanatics oh, until Three. No question. Three was yeah. basically yeah. you don't have to be a you don't have to see Rocky One or Two. Yeah. To, to be a Rocky fan, yeah. and then of course Rocky Four was outstanding. And I liked Rocky Four. Now, there's supposedly there's one that they remade. It's called Rocky versus Drago. It's like all re-edited and stuff. Okay, like that. it was the director's cut of Rocky Four. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but Stallone during the pandemic did a documentary. Yeah, filming him re-editing yeah. Rocky Four. There's a right. lot of different angles from the fight that are different, and uh, there's more of Adrian. Yeah, I'd, uh, like to, I'd like to see that. But they removed Paulie's robot. Oh, that's right. Happy birthday, Paulie. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go. Um, can I, move I remember that robot and the kid. The kid was terrible. In that movie. Oh, they, I mean, the continuity of the kids yeah. in, in those movies are horrible. Yeah. Um, and the worst kid acting it was definitely, uh, um, I'm going to have to say, Sage Stallone. Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, you know, Sage, God rest his soul. I'm not, nothing personal against him. I just think it was just. I think he did pretty good. Uh, it was all right. Speaking of sequels that are coming back out, did you hear this? They're making, a, finally, a sequel to The Goonies. Yes, I did hear that, yeah. Right. It's not confirmed. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I, I heard it through the grapevine. Not confirmed. I, I heard it through my sources in Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who's met the more celebrities here? Yeah, well, I'm not calling you out. Actually, no, you should point to Jeff, because it's him. He's met more, more celebrities. I'm never a fan of you that know when we're gonna confirm, can we, can, You know when we're going to confirm this? Yes. When? At Schiller, when we talk to Corey Feldman. He's loose as a goose. He, doesn't even he know won't what fucking say anything. Yeah. I mean, maybe he will, actually. If I tell you they're going to come in with Hollywood and kill me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pretty good person. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll have Jeff put his real machete did to see, his throat. Did you see the video of him? He was coming out to meet some fans. He's Do you like, think we can grease Feldman like to give us any doubt? Yeah. yeah. And he's filming, and I said, I posted it on Facebook. I said, here's Corey Feldman showed everybody his, his new phone. <laughs> he was walking out. <laughs> he ain't going to say anything. Corey's not going to say anything. Yeah, you never know. No, nah, I don't know. Well, well, we'll find you out. Take a franchise like so the current, Goonies, yeah, I, and I, everybody's gonna like kill me because they gave you this information. <laughs> I yeah, know, I know I mean, the I, I, true identity of One Eyed Willie. Hopefully, no one will molest me on this one. <laughs> I don't know. Supposedly, <laughs> Michael they got Jackson's the green light, dead, <laughs> and they want to name it the the Curse of uh, One Eyed Willie. There you go, the Curse of One Eyed Willie. So, and I heard that Sam Raimi's involved in it. And Sean Astin gained all the weight the chunk lost. I noticed. Right. Oh. Sean Astin now looks like Danny DeVito. <laughs> very nice guy from what I understand, Sean Astin. Jeff would know. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. sure. He seems very open to his fans and very... No, he's very, a very yeah. nice guy. His political yeah. structure is a little fucked up. Why? What is he doing? He's another Mark Hamill. Really? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. He did white dudes for Kamala. <laughs> did he? Yes. He does Zoom this chat. This is Astin? This is Sean Astin. Mark Hamill the other know. day posted on uh, Instagram. No, it had to be and Twitter. He's like, he, it was, somebody shared it on Instagram. And he's like, thumbs up, and you can see the stage in the background. And he's like, any Stevie Wonder fans out there? And I, I posted under it. I said, do you ever go anywhere with anyone else? Are you always by your miserable, lonely fucking self? Wow. Well, he, well, he went with Stephen King somewhere. Did you see that recently? He did? Yeah. Douchebags. They were sitting next to each other in some theater. Yeah, giving each other handies. There's a picture of Stephen <laughs> King today with the Kamala t-shirt on. He's going thumbs up like future. You know what I'm going to have to do now? I'm going to have to get a picture of Mark Hamill and Photoshop Kamala the Ugandan giant. <laughs> I'm for Kamala. Yeah. This is the only Kamala I support. I'd vote for that Kamala, but even though he's dead and he, yeah. had, he had no legs. Yeah. Diabetes took him. Diabetes. The, <laughs> the sugar. The yeah. sugar. The sugar, the sugar baby that took Diabetes. your legs. And that was his name uh, prior Harris. to that. It was Sugar Bear Harris. Yeah. So the the, the beaties go. the beaties got him. The sugar took my legs. <laughs> <laughs> beady 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 beaties. God help Speaking me. of the uh, the Goonies, how many Fratellis are left? Just one? No, there's still Joey Pants and uh, Robert Davi. Yeah. Oh, okay. So only only Sloth and Mom's, Mama Fratelli. Mom's gone. Huh? Yeah, she died. In, she died. Oh, right, she died right after uh, Scrooged. The night was sultry. <clears throat> Young salt at once make me choke. <laughs> for me, Vagel, for me, do it for me. Do it for me, Vagel, for me. And you met her, didn't you? No, I never met her. No? No. Did you, Jeff? No. We went, no. To, we went to school with a girl who looked like her. Oh, oh is that right? Jody. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jody. <laughs> No, Terry Funk's not going to be in this one. He wasn't in the original one. Either. Who was the uh, the the, car, the guy in the uh, 
The, the, the mongoloid that lived in the cellar there, or whatever. The, Slav? Yeah. John Matusak? It was John Matusak. Right. I mean, that was Terry Fox. Oh, Damn. my God. <laughs> Look at the horse yeah. tooth banana nose yeah. you got here in this retard costume. I can't do it. I can't believe. I'm in a what? <laughs> I'm having baby roots? <laughs> what they need to do, though, is they need to leave all these great movies from the uh, the 80s alone. Yeah. Stop mm -hmm. fucking rebooting them. They ruin them. Yeah. I think they ruin them. Well, there's nobody, nobody can Roland write back. anything. Nobody can no. write anything. Well, you know who wrote the goonies? Some goon. No, Chris Columbus wrote the goonies. Oh, did he right. really? Right. right. Why did he set it in uh, Seattle or Washington? It's so, so grim. Because they needed the, the ocean. The just looks damp. They needed the ocean? Mm -hmm. I don't think they were, they were going to settle it, settle it in Maine. Why not? It would have been much better. Yeah. The sun would have came out once in a while. Such a dismal movie. What? <laughs> wow. I think I just I, yeah, that, dinner, like, that dinner must have really sucked tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it was moist. It was humid. Very it humid movie. <laughs> I'm going to kill the bitch. It was moist and humid. I have a headache in my eye. <laughs> You know, it's you need a Snickers really satisfies you. Yeah, 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 yeah. The cheese yeah, balls. I, I can tell I'm starving. You know, those cheese balls didn't do it. I got to be honest with you. There's some faint little. They, they tasted they're medical. Stale. They may, they might have been. Did you check the date on those? Had like a, they, a they, they tasted, tasted like they tasted, medical. Yeah, they had like a band aid finish. You know, when you're kidding. You like a bite of band aid off. There's like that that flavor. <laughs> the band aid flavor. Gross. <laughs> you know, I've heard of you know cheese ball flavor or peanut butter flavor, but never heard of band aid you know flavor. Band aids with the like. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I wanted to ask TC, what do you think of um, band aids? Band aids? Yeah, they're great. No, we're not talking about they're sticky. We're switching gears here. Oh, we're switching gears. <laughs> what do you think about Sigourney Weaver throwing her hat in the ring in the Star Wars realm? See, I, Sigourney Weaver is overrated in my book. Oh, overrated. I mean, overrated. Okay. She was in Aliens. Okay, I'm great. Yeah. You know, wonderful. She, in her underwear, and she had nothing there. No body whatsoever. Oh, so, so her crack was hanging out. Big deal. I mean, it just, I mean, she's a very nice person. I met her. I got her autograph. <clears throat> and, of course, she's in Ghostbusters. But she's just not one of these people that's like a superstar. I get book. it. Do you think she's going to bring no, she anything gonna, she to gonna the be, franchise? The only reason they brought her in there is because she has aliens. What is going on over here? Oh, we're looking at some pictures. Of what? I'm talking about Sigourney Weave. What is Nudes. he showing you pictures? Nudes. What? Those, those strawberry candies that we don't know the name of? <laughs> yeah. We're just having some fun. Well, right, do, well, which would you rather lick, the strawberry candies or Sigourney Weaver, Quincy? <laughs> Werther's I'm candy. I'm crazy. Werther's. First of all, uh, how was the other candy taste like? What, Sigourney Weaver? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say... Uh, I'm going to say cherry. Peach, maybe peach. Lemonade and French vanilla cherry. ice cream. Maybe, oh, you know, on a bad day, it could, it could be like a crab cake or something. How about you, Jeff? What do you think Sigourney Weaver tastes like? <laughs> um, I'd, uh, I'd look, like a, a suntan oil or something like that. <laughs> suntan oil. I'm gonna, no, no, I'm gonna, no, no, snake oil. What, what was like uh, that movie? Uh, Coconut. Oh, yeah, yeah, something like that. I'm going to change what I think she tastes like. I think she tastes like that processed meat that was in the refrigerator in Ghostbusters. Oh. You actually eat this? Oh. <clears throat> Whoa, oh, some oh. bad baloney. I like I like Sigourney. I think I think it's all right. I mean, she's not going to enhance the franchise in any way, but no, she ain't going to do nothing. What Just like I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're grasping like, at straws. Star well, Wars. Galaxy Quest is, is the, oh. the, the nicest she okay. ever looked. You're right. Great Gal movie. Galaxy uh, Quest. Great movie. Galaxy Quest is my favorite Sigourney. I did see. I that. have one job. It's stupid. <laughs> the guy signing the autographs, Alan Rickman. He's phenomenal. He's the late Alan Rickman. Rickman. He's like Shatner. That's what he's doing. <laughs> he's like pushing the boy. That is a great movie. I, I I thoroughly enjoyed that movie, and I recommended it to so many people when it came out, and I was like, that looks stupid. I was like, no, trust me, it's good. It's the 25th Very anniversary, anniversary of, of that movie. Really? Really? And really? they just recently put... 25 years. 25, that would be 25th anniversary. They put, oh. they put the cast of uh, Galaxy Quest in a video game now with the cast of Star Trek. Ah, so they really? can actually have mashups now. Interesting. <clears throat> Which basically, yeah. I thought... Uh, One of my favorite actors of all time is in that. Sam Rockwell. Met him. Very He's nice great. guy. Did you ever see Moon? No. You Oh. Moon? Yes. Si yeah. Wasn't Sam that the one, Wasn't that the one man gang's nickname? No. Oh. It's about... You gotta watch it. <clears throat> Moon. You'd love it. I don't want to oh. spoil no, anything. I'm gonna look it up because I, I saw that the, the billboards outside of something what, or other. Make and... this movie even better. He's the only actor in the movie. Really? Yeah. 
I'm check. I'm gonna check all my streamers right now. I'd have to say my favorite Sam Rockwell role was when he played um, <clears throat> Chuck Barris in Confessions yes. of a Dangerous yes. Mind. A fantastic I, th- role. I thought that was Chuck Barris. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. We met him on Broadway, Jeff. I yeah. I, I wish I know who he was back then and everything. And yeah. he's getting better and better. I love the movie Jojo Rabbit. Well, he's an Academy Award winner, and he was in um, Green Mile, that great role. That's in right. Green Mile, and uh, well, how about way, way Richard back. Jewell? He played the uh, lawyer and the the Richard well, Jewell. That's right. That, that is right. true. <laughs> I did not think we would Damn. end today talking about Sam Rockwell, but he's a fantastic find? actor. Yeah, he's a phenomenal he's actor. Apple. Very underrated. <clears throat> oh, no, it might be on Prime. Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. Jim Rockford. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. He was on the Rockwood Files? Mm-hmm. No. Just ignore the fact that the AI voices Kevin Spacey in that movie. Oh. You'll get by, though. You'll get by. Another weird guy we met. You know, I and he just pissed his entire career away. Yeah. He yeah. is very talented. I, mean, I was actor. saying, I kind of miss him. Yeah. He's <laughs> a good actor. He's a good actor. <laughs> you you kind of miss him. <laughs> Let's bring him back. No, no, no. I love the movie American Beauty. That was a great part. It was. That was a great, uh, the, like, uh, he, uh, didn't age very well, but. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I have a funny Kevin Spacey story. <clears throat> oh. Did he? Were you in the room? No, no, no. I was not. I was. I was not in the room. I drank in that bother. I was not in the room with Heather Unruh's son. Um, (laughs) We were on down in Broadway, New York. I don't know if you were on this trip. You may have been, but 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 our good friend Quest was. Oh Jesus! And he, Kevin Spacey, was doing a play, and he came out and do an autograph. And other than the autograph collector, there's always these theater experts Mm. that are there. These marks that are going, and they're like. Mr. Spacey, how do you do it? Yeah. How do you do it? And some wise I said, he unzipped the kid's pants. <laughs> oh, oh you shit me. Oh my God. A hush uh, came yeah. over the street when that happened. And what did he do? <laughs> he just took the pen, ignored it, and did it went yeah, on. I'll way. give him that. I'll give him that. Okay. <laughs> I'll never forget. Mr. Spacey, yeah. how do you do it? How do you do it? He unzipped the kid's pants. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been biting his bottom lip till it was bleeding. That's why he signed everybody's autograph oh. that night. Oh. Just smart to just to move on. As I'll say. Let's bring Spacey back. He can yeah. co-star with James Woods in the next film. Yeah. He, Mr. Spacey or uh, Kevin Spacey? Kevin Spacey. Oh, okay. I, I, mean, I, I had the idea of like uh, bringing him back to, to play the role of Mike TV in a movie about <laughs> <laughs> play the role of Paris I Thiessen. Think I, think clear. Might, I think you might be able to get him for that. <laughs> oh, my God. I did drink in that bar, though, that he got in trouble. Did on you? The on the vineyard? On the Nantucket. Yeah, the club car or something they call it or something. The, the caboose or something like that. Oh, the caboose. It's a little train car. And it's a little yeah. tiny. Is and that it, where it happened? I guess that's where that the yeah. little incident took place. Yeah. Wow. But that kid shouldn't have been in there if he wasn't old enough. No. And regardless of if it took place like or it. not, his, he, it's just his career is trashed. No? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, they brought Mel Gibson back. That's true. And he's now doing comic Con. And he was good in the uh, Bobby Darren movie, One uh, Beyond the Sea. Okay, Kevin yeah. Spacey. I don't know if you ever saw that. That's an excellent. Never saw. He was also in uh, the last movie that Gene Wilder and, uh, well, the second to last movie that Gene Wilder and uh, Richard Pryor did. Hear no evil, see no evil. He's in that. He was the villain with the big wart on his face that was driving around with Joan Severance. Uh, really? Right. That was the first time I saw Kevin Spacey was in that movie. That came out in '89. You know what I've been meaning to tell you? <clears throat> I've seen this several times. Logan's Run, the, the trailer for Logan's Run. Remember the movie Logan's Run with Michael sure. York? Mm-hmm. Oh Fair God! Run. Yeah. You know who's Sci-fi. in Logan's Run has a bit part, and you can see him in the trailer. I've never seen the movie. The original Chuck from Happy Days. Oh really? You <laughs> see him like for a quick split second, and I rewound it several times. Just the original Chuck from Happy Days is in Logan's Run. He was yeah. in. Uh, he was in Willow. Was he really? Yeah, he Shit, was. I didn't know that. And his father, I, I, he has an Irish name. He, he Superman was, three. No, he's a scumbag. He was uh, in in Death Wish three. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like O'Halloran. Yeah. Oh, like uh, his his dad is the guy from RoboCop, but uh, he played Manny Fraker. Right. Yeah. I need huh. some more guys. As many you can spare me. Thanks. Death and Wish then, three, huh? Death Wish three. And oh, also oh, Superman shit. three. He played Brad. <clears throat> he played uh, Brad, uh, like uh, the the old high school buddy. He, is yeah. it Gavin yeah. O'Hurley? Yes. Gavin O'Hurley. Gavin, Gavin O'Hurley. O'Hurley. And his and his father, like Jeff said, was the old man in Robocop, but he was also the alien Grig in the last no. Starfighter. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. This isn't that that's uh so that was the original Chuck? Yeah. Oh, then it was the Chuck after him. Okay, I didn't know. Say, that. There was there was there was two Chucks. It was was the there two Chucks? Chuck. He was the Chuck 
He must have been the one after because it was the, he was in the episode with the Christmas lights weren't working. Oh, okay. Because and he goes, he, he did became, you ever think that that bulb was the bad one? He goes, well, it did cross my he, Because mind. he became very good friends with Ron Howard, and that's why he was in Willow. All right. I sent you down the wrong path. But I don't think that guy's been in anything else but the Happy Days. A couple episodes of Happy Days. And Logan yeah, it Brown. does say Chuck Hanahan was played by yeah. Gavin O'Hurley. Yeah, but there's, there's, another, there's definitely another Chuck. There's another Chuck yes, in an alternate universe? Hold on. Did he have wow. The, did he I'm fat checking as, as fast as I can here. <laughs> while, while this is going on, Quincy, can you sing the Happy Days theme? Sunday, Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. Thursday, Friday, happy days. Saturday, what a day. Rockin' all week with you. This day is ours. Won't you be mine? Oh, happy this day days. is ours. Won't Thank you, you Quincy be Briscoe. Mine? I bring the microphone back to Bittman. That's him. Who, what, who is this? CJ just got a picture of him. Who, I couldn't. Who is the mystery second Chuck? Randolph Roberts. Yes. Is it related to Jake? Randolph Roberts. Let me see if I can get a picture. Well, there, there's the picture. Randolph Roberts, season two. How many episodes of Happy Days was it? Was, was this on the Love American style version of no, Happy Days? No, it's like I said, the Christmas one. Okay. They okay. gave him a basketball. He was in Love You don't remember Happy him? Days. I do not know who that person is. Wow. Geez. I knew the other Chuck. If, well, if you ever watch the uh, trailer for Logan's Run, you'll see him briefly. The bootleg Chuck. The yeah. NWO Chuck. Season two. He was in season two. It doesn't say how many episodes, though. Not enough to commit to memory. So that was the original. Now, yeah, I was going to say he definitely was in everything. Uh, Death Wish Three, because I remember I remember that bastard. Man, Fraker. Yeah, Logan Ron, Kill, kill Phil, Phil, 1976. My favorite out of the Death. Well, Wish we have had a hell of an episode down. I mean, we've talked about Jason movies. Why Friday the Thirteenth is a, is a terrible day, and the two Chucks from Happy Days and a lot of other things and a terrible meal I had. and and this is and, and this is all stemmed from a bad meal <laughs> that Mrs. Bittman made and Tosh Lent you Tosh, failed you Tosh dropped Lent, the ball Tosh Lent <laughs> Made Stay a, away from hamburger help up. Yeah. I mean, did she watch Vacation recently or something? No, she never even saw that movie. It was just it was on sale. It was two for something. Two for something. I and you know what two they for had above, You know what they had above it for like 319? Boxy. What? <laughs> Guinness, Guinness mac and cheese. Ugh, no, I'm gonna tell you. No, no. I bought it last season. It has, doesn't taste like Guinness. They just put it in. But I'm telling you, it's the best mac and see, cheese. See, CJ hopes it tastes like Alec Guinness because he's a huge Star Wars fan. But <laughs> no. I can't see him hoping. Geez, I hope it tastes like Alec Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> You're my only hope. It's a little clammy. <laughs> but if you ever see that on the shelf, trust me, it doesn't taste like Guinness. All right. But no. for some reason, Guinness markets it. They they have potato chips too. But this mac and cheese, mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Out of this world. Does it have a world's yeah. record? For me, it does. No. It would have been a lot better than I ate tonight. Blah. Is that the worst yeah. meal you've ever had tonight? In a long time, yeah. Mm. Try the smoked trout. Would you rather have? Would you rather go down to the Pine Street Inn and have a soup? There you right. go. No, I see you're right. Now I see you're, they now do you're making me stew. feel bad. They now, do want a beef stew down, down there. There are people there who would be like, I'd, I'd give anything to have that here. You know? Yeah, they were starving home. kids in China. I don't know, now I feel like an asshole. You're gonna go home right now. She's gonna have this big deep dish pizza that she got when you came down here to the podcast. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> eat it. I'd be up all night. Now. <clears throat> I used to love to eat late at night. Eating up late is nice. We're great. Old. I can't do it anymore. Why? I just can't digest and go to bed. I used to be able I would come home and throw down a sub or a pizza or something, especially I've been on with drinking yeah. or eat breakfast. I used to go to the, the town Hotel. diner in New, uh, the New York diner in uh, Watertown. You sit down and they give you a pile of scally bread toast. But it's a oh, I love scally bread toast. And then you can order anything off the you menu. You know what's good on scally bread? Is making a grilled cheese with scally oh, bread. Oh, unbelievable. <clears throat> we used to go. What was that place we used to go to, Jeff? When back in the 90s, it was open. On week, oh, the uh, Hojo's in Wellington Circle. Oh, nice. Yeah, that yeah. was great. Was that the place with the all-you-can-eat? Yeah. That was the all-you-can-eat. Yeah. We went in with Bull. This is a true story. <laughs> Wait a minute. The Hojo's all-you-can-eat. The Hojo's all-you-can-eat breakfast buffet. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. In right. Wellington Circle in Medford. Right. It closed shop in like 95, 96. I brought Airwolf Chris, our director, yeah. down there. He was a youngin' at the time. Yeah. And, and Bull's like, I'm going to go in there right now. I know the guy. So we go in there, and he knew the guy, and he got us in there for cheap. You know, even though the buffet was like six I was bucks. Say, how come I how it, it was like six bucks. So we got it for three bucks. All right, <laughs> and it was a Saturday night slash Sunday morning <clears throat> at like three. Mm. The place was packed. Oh, of course, packed from all the clubbers that was coming from Boston and Somerville yeah. and all over the place. So we get a booth. Bull can't fit in the booth. <laughs> this was Bull when he was at his heaviest. He sits sideways, oh. <laughs> and, he, and he goes, I'm going to go up. Okay. So he went up. Bull had a method yeah. at the buffets, especially the breakfast buffet. Yeah. He didn't pile everything on a plate at once. 
he'd get a stack of pancakes, yep. finish it, a stack of bacon, finish it, and so on and so on and okay. so on. But he had a stack of plates. It was like nine of them. <laughs> and the guy knew, he's, he's like, Bo, what are you doing? I only like one item at yeah. a time. <laughs> and then he asked the man, why? He goes, it tastes better. Well. So, and, and he had an audience that night. People were watching him do this. I bet. And uh, that place was great. I, 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 I miss I, Howard Johnson. I really miss the Hojo's All You Can Eat Breakfast Over Buffet. Break, and they give you that, that copper-colored coffee pot. Yeah. So you didn't have to yeah. keep ordering cups of coffee? Way better than Denny's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it had those the maple syrup containers right yeah. on the table. Mm-hmm. And they had good ice cream, too. You could <clears> buy everything it Everything tastes there. like onions in <laughs> Denny's. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're right. It you're does. Right. Well, Ugh. most of the ice cream shops are, are pretty good. Who asked you? Yeah, no one asked you about your opinion, Briscoe. <laughs> hey, speaking of food, before we go, Jeff, what did you get from the gas station? I'm so curious. Well, oh, the, the taquitos. <laughs> <laughs> a what? He bought a taquito at the gas station. It's so pleasant the way he said. How were they? Oh, they were, they were, they were, they were decent. The chicken or uh, cheese taquitos? Or? Well, one was steak and cheese and one was like a pepperoni pizza plate. Mm, a taquito Santana? Yeah. Taquito Santana. <laughs> wow, and how much did the taquito Santana cost? Two dollars each. Still Two. better than what I ate tonight. Okay. Well, you know, you can always go over there and sniff the uh, container. No, no, I'm done sniffing things you don't, for well, Okay, <laughs> well, give you that. All right, give the microphone to Quincy so we can wrap up the program. An extended version of the After Hours yeah, Well, program. thank you for watching this uh, very interesting episode of, um, you know, our program here. We hope you enjoyed, and uh, we hope to see you again very soon. And remember, we never, never close. close. Please drive home carefully, and we hope to see you again soon. You thank you. Turd. Good night. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Woo. You cheese ball. <laughs>